Welcome to Does Geek. What I want to talk with you today about is maintaining privacy on your mobile device. These devices we carry around with us everywhere. I laugh when people are like, oh, the government's in some big conspiracy to slip some chip in so they could track where you are, not realizing that they're carrying around a tracking device with them every single place that they go. That's your mobile device that sits in your pocket. And by the way, you probably have more personal information, more information that you want to keep private on your cell phone than you do your desktop or your laptop computer or anything else. We carry these things around because they're so convenient and they allow us to get so much done in our lives. But they also, especially with just the Android and iOS options, are privacy disasters, nightmares. Not only that, but when you're in the Android platform as well, you have things like multiple layers of privacy issues. You have the Google ones where you're going to have to do settings with Google. Then you've got Samsung on top of it. Let's say if you bought a Samsung device, you're going to have to go through their things and turn off a lot of their settings. So you've just got a lot to do. And none of these devices, by the way, because I'm not a fanboy of iOS or Android, I wish there was a really good third option out there, which we'll talk about more in a second that you could utilize. Uh, but none of these are really privacy focused out of the box. There's a lot of settings and things that you need to change. And we're going to do a two part video. This first part's going to go through a couple options that are really going to help you have a device that's more safe. You can also check out my VPN video because you can install those VPNs on your devices as well. And I go through VPNs in the detail that really I don't think any other video out there has done. So it's worthy of checking out and will teach you how to pick a good and trustworthy VPN service. And of course, you could host your own as well if you're into that type of thing. But Android and iOS, yes, on Android, you can go put a different operating system on it. And that's going to give you a lot more control and privacy options than what you get in Android out of the box. But a lot of people can't do that. And that's who this video is for. A lot of people can't because of either the warranty on their device or specifically because their business has applications that need to authenticate through Google Play. They need Google Play applications to be able to do their work, to do their job, to have access to those things, to access to their work VPNs. And so because of that, I'm going to show you ways without having to root your device, without having to be a tech genius, that you can make your device far more private. Is it going to be privacy perfect? No. Number one, there's no such thing. It's almost impossible unless you just disconnect from the internet. But number two, these things anybody can do. You can send these instructions to your grandmother. She's going to be able to have a device that's more private. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want you to do is change your DNS settings, whether you're on Android or iPhone. iPhone will be a little different, but you can still set your DNS settings in iOS as well. So in Android, you're going to go into your settings and you're going to search for DNS. You're going to see this global option, private DNS, network, and internet. Once you click that, you're going to see an option down here below. You can see the VPN we have already set up as Proton VPN. This is fantastic because this will allow you with Proton, as we talked about in my VPN video, which you should check out as well. If you're interested in privacy, you should be running a VPN on your device. You can host one yourself or utilize one of the services there below. So you can do malware blocking and ad blocking and other things there. But next, you can go into Android and we're going to change our DNS from the standard provider. So I don't want my ISP's DNS there because DNS is what's translating all of the names you're typing in like google.com to its IP addresses so they can trace basically everything you go to through your DNS and record that information. So what I've done here is I'm using Cloudflare. We're using 1.1.1.1 cloudflare-dns.com and this is going to allow us to use the Cloudflare DNS here globally across the system. Any of the services that utilize the internet because this is a global setting will go through that private DNS option, which is going to help you stay more private. So that's our first tip. Change your DNS setting from its default and do this on your home router as well so that it's not going through your ISP's DNS. They're not resolving the names for you. Next, what I want you to do is turn off all of your personalized ads that happen on your device. If you're on iOS, an iPhone, iPad, iPad, iPod Touch, go to settings, tap privacy, have Apple advertising toggle personalized ads to off. You're going to have to, in Android, go through many different areas because you not only have, of course, your manufacturer like Samsung of your device that may have additional ads and additional EULAs that you need to agree to and things that you need to opt out of. But if you type in privacy to begin with in your settings, you'll see something like this. You can do a privacy checkup on your Google account. You can turn off all of the features for personalized ads, tracking your web activity, location history, all of those things you can start going through and turning those settings off. 
you need to pay attention to these settings every time you do an update and remind yourself to go back in and do another privacy audit and check to make sure none of these settings in a big update, a new Android version or anything else reverted back to the prior versions. I have noticed Google does a pretty good job when I'm switching devices or upgrading, keeping those privacy settings the same because a lot of it goes through Google's platform. Where you have to be careful is if your device is like say a Samsung, for instance, you may have to go through and find Samsung's personalized ad settings and things or not utilize even better any of their services that are on the device and then you don't have to worry about it at all. Turn off Bixby and all of those assistants and things like that. Speaking of assistants, don't use them, turn them off. Do not utilize these things, these basic recording devices. They do not have good privacy policy. They are not worthy of even your time. They're not that great or assistance. They're not great assistance to begin with. So don't waste your time with them, turn them off. And that's gonna help you maintain your privacy in a much bigger way. Because if you've ever used one of these devices and audited the recordings when it says oh, only starts recording when you say hello, Google or whatever it is, you'll notice when you go back into the recordings that it hears, it hears its name, these assistant services very often when it's not even being used and start recording conversations and stuff. Keep that crap off. Do not use personal assistance, but make sure you're going through all of your privacy settings in your device and turning that stuff off. So this next piece of advice is vitally important and that's not utilizing biometrics as your sole source of authentication into your phone, whether using Android or iOS, it doesn't matter. Biometrics, facial recognition, fingerprint technology. Instead, you want to utilize, you can utilize those things, they're very convenient, they're very fast, but you wanna utilize a pin instead or a password based authentication when you're waking up your device. So as soon as you hit that power button and it goes to sleep and you hit that power button again, you should be doing a pattern, a pin or a password, pin and password much better than just the pattern itself because there are ways to really hack into the pattern or be able to see the pattern through smudges and things like that because you're waking your device and using it so often, it's a thing, it happens. So utilizing a pin or a password is the best way to go. And here's why this is so important. There are many Fifth Amendment rights that you have, and people think that they're not going to be required to basically open up their device for a police officer or something on a routine stop. But the reality is that there are a lot of situations and cases in which the actual biometrics are not protected under your Fifth Amendment. Meaning, because when you're going through a normal booking process at a police station, they're going to take your picture, they're going to take your fingerprint, it's not protected. That's just a normal part of the booking process. So they may be able to force you easily to use your fingerprint to unlock your phone and they can go through your device. And while you think you follow all the laws and you're the perfect citizen, you would be surprised, especially if we look over here at wrongful convictions, thousands of people are wrongfully convicted around the world. Now, does that mean police officers are bad and detectives? No, none of that. It's just saying that evidence can make it look like you're guilty and you may think that evidence is just completely benign, but it happens to fit a scenario that a police officer, somebody is looking for. And you can see, you know, just the exonerations alone. And you know how difficult it is to go through an exoneration process. So the fact that we have 2,500 plus of them since 1989 of people who were convicted of terrible crimes because of evidence stacking up. They were innocent and getting off later. You can see why this is such an important thing. Even if you're the most greatest law abiding citizen on the planet, you do not want to give law enforcement access to your device before your lawyers and everybody else have a chance to review what the heck's going on. And you have a chance to actually make sure your rights are enacted in this case. So that's why you do not want to utilize something like biometrics plus. Yes, a lot of them can be faked. You know, people have talked about photographs and AI and different things to be able to fake facial recognition and stuff. I think it's more difficult than a lot of people lead on. It can be done. What we're talking about here is just not being able, not giving people easy access uh, to get into your phone without a warrant and without the proper due process necessary to get that information off your phone while your rights are being protected. And that's why it's important to make sure that you can use biometrics once you're in your phone, but for waking your device and things like that, make sure you're using a pin or a password instead. So there will be a part two of this video. Hopefully you're enjoying this and we're gonna have a lot more tips and tricks because there's a lot more stuff we gotta get to. We can't do it all in one video, but I'm gonna leave you with one more here. And that is to make sure 
that you're utilizing a different browser than what comes with your phone by default. So you can use an option instead, get rid of the Samsung browser, get rid of the Chrome browser, and instead utilize something like a DuckDuckGo browser, utilize the Brave browser, the Vivaldi browser, the Firefox mobile browser. Those are much better options. With several of those, you still wanna go in and turn off any personalized you know, tracking settings. Do you wanna opt in to send information, technical, that type of stuff. Make sure all of those things are unchecked, but they're just gonna be far more private by default than what's going to come on your phone. So do not be tempted to utilize the browser that comes with your device, make sure you change that out. And then the last thing, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip here. Use Bitwarden as a password manager. It's the one that I utilize and they've sponsored this entire channel and the entire Destination Linux network. By the way, we used them before they ever sponsored us. So this is not like a typical sponsor spot where I'm like, use this thing that paid me. No, Bitwarden is amazing. Bitwarden.com slash DLN, you can get started for free. If you're using LastPass or anything else, stop. Go use Bitwarden. I have it on my devices. It's the one that I trust. And it's for $10. You can get their premium account with a gigabyte of storage, TLTP authentication. You can use YubiKeys with it. It's just an amazing service. And having your password safe and protected, especially with all the services there, is really important. Why am I saying this in the mobile video? Well, specifically because a lot of the browsers will ask you, do you want to save your login and password? And it's so convenient because you don't want to keep typing it in every time. Well, instead, utilize Bitwarden. You can trust because they have third-party audits that happen on their platform. Most of their code out there is completely open source. You can go audit yourself. It's just a very trustworthy and fantastic company. So go to bitwarden.com slash deal in and check them out as your password manager you're going to store. They have one for Android. They have an app for Android. They have an app for iOS. They have it for Linux. They have it for Windows. Wherever you're at, you can use Bitwarden there. So you're going to have your own browser. You're not going to save passwords and your logins in the browser. You're going to save those to Bitwarden. Let Bitwarden handle all of that. Plus, you can put your two-factor authentication in there as well. And it's super inexpensive at just $10 a year there. It's going to save you a lot of money from the other services on there. So hopefully, this helps you start to take your mobile cellular device and become more private with it, to focus more on privacy and the security of the device than ever before, because we carry so much personal information on this. And you have the right to have your information private, just like you have the right to walk in your home and not have a bunch of other people just randomly walk in and start looking through your stuff because you have a right to privacy and you have a right to privacy for your data and on your cell phones. And we're going to help you lock it down without having to be any kind of tech wizard at all. You can send this video to your grandma. She's going to be able to do these settings. They're so easy. They're so simple to change. And of course, go check out my VPN video as well. And until next time, we're going to do a part two again. We're going to get deeper into this stuff. But until next time, get out there and fill your brains.